Hello, my name is Laura and welcome to Sunday Morning Knits. Hi, welcome to Sunday Morning Knits, my knitting podcast where I talk about all the things I am knitting, all the things I'm currently working on, things that I finished and things that I plan to work on in the future, as well as my knitting acquisitions and occasionally other fiber projects like spinning and crochet. So, welcome. It has been like <laughs> two months since I last recorded. Um, things have been a little bit crazy here. So I finished my second year of my PhD, which was chaotic because my university was on strike. And then I moved and then I fell and like couldn't walk because I was in so much pain. And now I have COVID. So it's been a chaotic two months, which is why I have not filmed. But I'm here today. Uh, I'm a very sorry. I'm very sorry if I sound a little bit nasally. Uh, that would be the COVID. I don't recommend it. Try to avoid it, folks. COVID is on the rise. Be aware. So, sorry about that in advance. Uh, sorry if I'm a little bit sniffly. I will try to cut that out. And uh, yeah. Otherwise, I'm very happy to be here recording this podcast today because it's been far too long. So my apologies if I have kept you waiting. Uh, if you're new here, thank you so much for joining. Um, and I really hope that you enjoy my podcast. So I want to start off today by talking about some finished objects that I have completed over the past two months. Now, I don't have that many finished objects because I have been working on a couple of very big projects that I haven't showed you before, but I do have a handful. So I'm going to start off with my knitting finished object. Oh, it's tangled. And that is my Florence bag by Petite Knit. So this is my Florence bag. I actually have stuff in it right now because I'm using it. Um, and I left it in to like show you what the bag looks like when it's full. So I made the smallest size. I used Pearl Soho Sweetgrass in the lace weight in the color Rye. I got it on sale because I th think they discontinued it. Um, it is a little bit small. I kind of wish I'd made the bigger size. I have so much of this left over that I could make the bigger size. And I think I might. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it actually right now. I made one modification to it and that's that... I added these little like tabs on the side with little D-rings so that I can detach and reattach this leather strap. Here, I'll show you. Ah, I added these little, I don't know if that's focusing or not. Um, little D-rings and little straps to the side so that I can take the strap on and off because this strap is actually from my um, twig and horn project bag. Uh, I didn't want to use the actual petite knit strap because I've heard that the dye rubs off really badly um, and I didn't want to risk ruining any of my outfits. So I just used the twig and horn strap that I already had. So that was the only modification that I made. Um, I have sewed the lining in on the inside. There are still some threads sticking out because I haven't trimmed them properly but this is what the lining looks like on the inside. It's um from my favorite fabric store back home in Canada called Thread Count Fabrics out of Manitoba. I just love it. I order stuff from them all the time. Actually, I have a package from them that I have to go pick up downstairs. I will go pick that up at some point. But yes, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I can't remember what needle size I used, but it's the one that's recommended in the pattern. Um, and I just think it's like the most perfect little summer bag. I am going to flock next month which I'll talk about more at the end and I think this is just gonna be like the perfect little touch to my outfit at flock so I'm very happy with how it turned out very excited for being able to use it this summer I'm glad that I made it oh and the air conditioning has turned on okay I'm gonna go turn that off and I'll be right back note to self always turn air conditioning off before hitting record <laughs> whoops okay so that is my Florence bag it is my only finished knitting object. So I'm very happy with it. Can't wait to wear it. Okay, I have three other finished objects 
and they are all spinning finished objects. Ta-da! These are... So these are my two tour de fleece spins because tour de fleece is currently ongoing. And this is a whip that I finished during tour de fleece. So I finished this off right at the beginning of TDF because I wanted to spin these two. So this is Myrtle Fiber in the colorway Mauve Memento. It is a two ply and I have not yet counted how much I ended up with, but I think it's about a DK weight. I'm fairly happy with this. I think that my ply needed more spin to it. I'm not super happy with how the ply turned out. Here, I will show you. I'm not super happy with that. I love the colorway, so we'll definitely get knit into something, but I learned that I needed to put more twist in my ply. So when I spun this beauty, which is the little fiber coat. Oh, I forgot to mention, this is Polworth, I believe. This is little fiber co Cheris uh, on her core, no, that's not Cormo, Coriadale base. I actually just finished this the other day and I wound it this morning. This is my second TDF spin. It is also a two ply. And I truly think that this is the most beautiful color red in the entire world. Like, look at this. This is just magical. Now I have not washed this and I have not yet counted how much I have. I think this has come out to about a sport weight. Um, and I put more twist into the ply. So the, I'm far more happy with how the twist has turned out, which is good. I really love this. I can't wait to knit with it. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I might knit a hat, but I have not decided. And finally, I have my absolute favorite thing I have spun during TDF. This is Little Fiber Co's um, I Can Buy Myself Flowers on American Rambouillet. And this is my number one, mo like this is the spin I am the number one most proud of. I, so this is a chain ply and I chain plied it because I wanted to keep the color changes in like a little bit of a longer span rather than like doing a fractal or doing a two or three ply. I wanted to like keep the colors together. So I'm really proud of that. This came out to a fingering weight on average. I have not yet counted how much I have. So unsure about that. But I have discovered from this that Rambouillet is my most favorite thing in the entire world to spin. So when I'm at Flock next month, I plan on stocking up on some Rambouillet uh, because it was just the best. And switching from, so I spun this first and then I spun the, spun the Cherise and switching from Rambouillet to Cormo was really, not Cormo, why did I keep saying Cormo? Coriadale was really hard. The Coriadale was like really grippy Whereas this was like quite smooth and like my singles were a lot more even with this and they were a lot more uneven with this one. I don't know. It was hard, but I love this. I'm so, oops, I knocked over my water bottle. So, so proud of this. I can't wait to knit with it. I don't know what I'm going to knit, but I'm very excited no matter what. So yeah, those are my three finished objects. Or sorry, I guess that's four finished objects for the last two months. Okay, so next up is works in progress. And oh my God, I have so many. I have two that you have not seen at all. And I'm like a good chunk of the way through them. So <laughs> let's start with the one that I've been putting the most work into. That is my Lunin test knit for the absolutely lovely Crea Bea, um, Rebecca Klo. She is absolutely wonderful. And I am testing her Lunin pullover. I am doing size seven. I'm doing the round neck. There's also a polo neck version. I'm almost done and it's been a wonderful experience test knitting so far. Uh, there were some errors with the pattern originally. So I knit like to, I mean like I knit the yoke and like almost joined under the shoulders. Didn't 
quite get that far and then actually had to like frog and start again but that's okay Rebecca was lovely about it and extended our pattern test period for us to make those changes so it wasn't a problem in the end at all I am knitting this in Pearl Soho don't remember uh where is my yarn oh here it is Pearl Soho Plain Air which is 67% wool and the 33% organically grown cotton in the colorway Pink Dusk. Um, I am knitting it on mm, US size 6, so 4 millimeter needles, and I'm almost done. I just have to finish the sleeves and then finish the body, um, and I should be done in plenty of time for the end of the test, which is next week and then the pattern will be releasing. So keep your eyes peeled for that. I will also have a Lunin test knit vlog coming because I have vlogged the process of testing this. So keep your eyes peeled for that too, but it's been a lovely test and I highly recommend it if you are looking for a summer shirt. Uh, oh, I'm doing the DK weight version by the way too. My favorite part about this is the shoulder details, which Rebecca has in a lot of her designs recently. I just think it's so beautiful, like, ugh gorgeous design so yeah highly recommend uh I'm very excited to be done this uh I can't wait this is actually wildly going to be my very first summer garment ever I've never finished a summer garment before this and I live in Los Angeles <laughs> so that's a little bit wild to me but you know there we are I come from Canada so I've also been here for two years. <laughs> oh well, uh, this is the year that I'm knitting summer garments. So this is my first. I have another whip that I'll show you in a second. But yeah, that's my linen tea. I'm a big fan. I really love it. Okay, linen out of the way. I will show you my other summer garment. Now, I can't remember if I showed this in the last episode or not. I think I did. I am making the Flutter Butt Shirt by Jessie Made Designs. I am knitting it in Merino Cashmere Nylon by Salty Blonde Fibers in the colorway No Judge of Beauty. I love it. I think it's stunningly beautiful. But I made a big mistake. <laughs> well, not a big mistake. It is knit bottom up and I did not knit the body long enough. So I actually cut the garment and am adding extra length, which was absolutely terrifying. I have never done this before. Um, oh, and I've just dropped like all of my stitches. Ah. Okay, not all of them. I dropped like five. Okay, stitches have been picked up. Yeah, so I basically put in lifelines and then I cut a stitch between the lifelines, undid it, threaded the needle in, and now I'm adding more length. That was absolutely terrifying uh, and I've never done anything like it, but here we are, it was a success. I think I need to add like two or three extra inches to the body because it was pretty short. Um, I had not accounted for my bust and I needed to account for my bust in like the length of the body because I had quite a big bust. So anyway, because of that, I need to add like three inches, but that's fine. It's going well. Uh, the sleeves are done. Like the little flutter is done and I'm almost done the little ruffle on the bottom too. But I put that on hold just because I wasn't sure how long I would want the bottom ruffle to be once I added the extra length in the body. Um, so yeah, almost done that. This has been on hold for a while because of my lunin, actually, because I jumped in for the test knit. But I'm still hoping to finish this before flock. I think it could be a lot of fun to wear. So hopefully, if you see me at flock, you will see this and it will not be in two pieces. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, it's been quite the process learning how to put lifelines in, cut the shirt up, which is terrifying, add length. It's been good. 
Uh, if you need to add length to a top, I highly recommend the process, and I will link the video that I used as a reference down below. But uh, as a note about this colorway, I'm absolutely in love with it. I think it's so beautiful. I can't wait to wear it. So I do really want to finish this. If not for flock, then definitely before summer's up. You know what? I live in LA, so I could wear this shirt at any time of the year. I just want to finish this. <laughs> Hopefully I will do that soon. So that's my other summer top uh, work in progress. The other thing that I started, the other huge project that I started and you have not seen yet, and, I, and I'm confident that you haven't seen this yet, is I started and knit the entire yoke of a Saski sweater by the Petite Knitter. <laughs> if you know me, you know that I adore bunnies. I used to foster bunnies, I used to have a bunny. I just love them so unbelievably much. So when the Petite Knitter released this pattern, I was like, well, I obviously have to make that, and I know I'm going to make that. So I finally ordered the yarn for it, and I finally cast on, and I knit the entire yoke, and I have joined under the body and knit, um, sorry, joined under the arms for the body, and I've knit about an inch and a half. I generally don't like color work, but for this project, I actually learned how to do two-handed color work, so holding one strand English, which is my normal style, and then one strand Continental. And it went so smoothly and I loved every minute of it that now I want to knit all of the two color color work jumpers. Like, it's just so cute. I don't think the color is coming off on camera. I'm like looking in the mirror that I have behind my camera and it's kind of not coming up. It's like a beautiful crimson red um, and then white yarn. I... I'm using Cascade 220 Sport Weight Non Superwash. I can't remember the colorways, but it's like the white and then burgundy, I think maybe. I did test to make sure that the red wasn't gonna bleed before knitting this, because I was super worried about that, but it didn't bleed. But this pattern calls for fingering weight yarn, and I actually went up to Sport Weight. Now, the reason I did that is because with the fingering weight, I got a really, really, really open gauge and you could actually see my floats like behind the stitches and I didn't like that. I was also doing it reverse. So I was doing red bunnies on a white sweater. Um, I ended up frogging that and switched to white bunnies on a red sweater and then I went up to sport weight so that I would get a bit of a denser fabric, but I stayed like my gauge stayed the same like I still got the same number of stitches within the same number of uh, with the same needles and everything like that just it's a thicker fabric so that's the only change that I've made to the pattern and I'm loving it I obviously can't wear this in LA because this is 100% Peruvian Highland wool so basically I just have to finish this before December and then I'm going to wear this non-stop when I go home to Canada and I can't wait because I think it's the cutest thing ever like, come on, look at the little bunnies. Just adorable. So I have been putting a lot of work into this and my Loon in, which is why I don't have a ton of other finished objects and you haven't seen either of these yet, but now you have, and I'm so happy. I just love them so much. Uh, I can't wait to wear this. So uh, this is my first time using Cascade, and I have to say I am a big fan. I will definitely be knitting in Cascade again. I was heavily influenced by Rebecca uh, from the Crea Bea, who knits in Cascade constantly, and man, I can agree that it is just fantastic yarn and a really great price point. I think in total, this sweater is like under 60 bucks US, um, which as a bigger girl, I'm knitting size 8, I think, of this sweater. Uh, my measurements were for size 7, but... I wanted it to be nice and big. For a size eight sweater, knitting a sweater under $60 US is kind of a miracle. So highly recommend. It's a good option. Okay, 
I'm really excited to show you this next one. So I have recently watched every single podcast by um, Gently Chaotic Knits, Emily Curtis, um, because I found her podcast and absolutely fell in love. So I am a big baseball fan. I cheer for the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, and she is also a baseball fan. And when I went back through all of her videos, at the very beginning, she was doing the cutest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. She was making socks that track the wins and losses of her favorite baseball teams. Um, kind of like a temperature blanket, but for the wins and losses of her teams. And so I have cast on to do the same thing. Uh, Emily, if you watch this, I hope you don't mind that I copied you, but oh my god, it was just the cutest idea ever. So I am knitting one sock for the Phillies because I'm a big Phillies fan. Um, and I'm knitting one sock for the Blue Jays because I'm Canadian and I have to cheer for the Blue Jays because I'm Canadian and it's our only Canadian baseball team. So I am obviously nowhere near as far on my Jays socks, but I am completely caught up on my Philly socks. Uh, the red represents wins and the white represents losses for my Phillies. And then for the Jays, the blue represents wins and the white represents losses. So as you can see, the Phillies had a really great year. Uh, and as you're going to see in the next episode, the Jays are not having a great year. But that's fine. <laughs> At least one of my teams is having a good time. So uh, there are 162 games in a season during like the regular season for baseball. And in order to make socks that fit my feet, I knit 62 rows or 62 rounds on my foot. So my ankles or my legs are going to be 100 rows and then the foot's gonna be 62 rows for both of them. And then I don't think the Jays are gonna get into the playoffs, but if the Billies do, then I'll do the toe in um, their win-loss for the playoffs. So yeah, this is the other kind of project that I've been putting a lot of work into. I'm a big fan. Here, I'll hold them up. Sorry about the weird lighting. Um, I moved and have not decided where I want to film yet. And the lighting is just very strange today. I'm sitting at my desk, so sorry about that. But yes, back to my Philly socks. I love them. They're so cute. Um, and I can't wait to wear them. Hopefully I'll actually at some point get to wear them to a Phillies game. I mean, my partner and I are going to the Phillies Dodgers game in August, but we're not going to be done the season yet, so my socks won't be done, but that's okay. I love them. They, they make me very happy. I do have a few other sock projects on the go. One of them, which is underneath a pile of acquisitions, because I did not plan this very well, is a sock pattern that if you follow me on Instagram, you saw a very long time ago. Where did they go? Oh, here it is. Uh, you would have seen these socks a very long time ago, and I have decided I am going to release them as a pattern. So they are a pair of worsted weight socks with a little cable that runs down one side of them. So you can see the cable here. Uh, I'm still working on the leg, so you haven't, you can't see a foot yet, but the foot will be there in time. These are my Cellini socks. Um, if you are interested in test knitting these, please sign up for my newsletter below. I have set up a newsletter and a website and you'll be able to hear all about my upcoming test knits. I find the Instagram algorithm doesn't love me and uh, doesn't really show my posts or my stories to a lot of people or a lot of my followers like at all. So I think the newsletter is going to be the best way to hear about my test knits. Obviously, I will still post about my test knits on Instagram, uh, in stories and in posts, but the newsletter will be like the most assured way for you to hear about the tests. So. These are gonna be a very quick knit because uh, it's worsted weight and they're really big needles. So, and there's just a really cute little cable going down the side. If you've never done cables before, that's totally fine. This is a very easy cable to do and I'll link videos and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, the test knit call for these will be coming very soon. 
Oh, and these are, I'm currently knitting these on Knitting for Olive um, Heavy Merino in the colorway Petrol Blue. Although I do have um, some cream that I'm going to do a second sample in and think those are going to be so pretty. Um, but yeah, my Cellini socks. Now I have another pair of socks, a new sock pattern coming that is a fun collaboration and that is all I can share. Um, it is a secret at the moment, but if you are interested in a secret test, not, test call for those, again, sign up for that newsletter and you will hear all about the test call when it comes out. It will be coming out very soon because that sock needs to be in test for August. So if you're interested, sign up for my newsletter and you'll get more information. In terms of other works in progress, oh, I have one. Why do I think I have two more? No, I just have one more work in progress. Nope, totally lied. I do have two more. I have not showed you my progress on my God's blanket in a long time. So if you're new, I am knitting the Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose with the Greek Gods yarn by Paisley Knits Yarn Co. Or just Paisley Knits. Um, this was her book club from 2021, I think? 2022, maybe? I can't remember. I have one of all of the gods because my background is classics. I have two classics degrees. And so when I saw that she was doing the Greek gods, I was like, well, I obviously have to do that. That's actually how I came across Paisley Knits. Uh, and I love her so much. I love everything she does. Half my acquisitions today are Paisley Knits. I'm not even kidding. So yeah, I was like, well, I obviously need one of every single god. And then I held on to the, that yarn for so long because I didn't know what I wanted to make with it. And then Laura Penrose released the Sweet Shop Blanket and I was like, well, that's what I'm gonna make. So, ta-da! The placement of the gods is specific. Uh, the placement of the gods indicates different relations or references different stories. I talk about that in some of my other episodes, so you can go back and watch that if you're interested. I'll talk about it again in the future, but I think this episode's already gonna be long enough as it is. Um, so yeah, I have added quite a few squares since we last talked. I have added... Let's see. I put stitch markers in them so I would know. Okay, so I added Hermes here, Hephaestus, Poseidon, uh, Hades. Oh, I added another Hermes, Persephone, Hera, and I'm currently adding Dionysus. I work on this at night. This is the project that lives beside my bed. Um, and I knit on this when my partner and I are watching TV in bed. And it is turning out so beautifully. I love it so much. Polly, you're just magical. I love everything that you dye and will knit with your yarn for the rest of my life. So, yeah. This blanket's gonna be massive because I have so much yarn, but I can't wait. Uh, it makes my little classicist heart very, 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 very happy. So that's my Greek gods blanket. Okay, I've realized that that other whip that I'm working on is not in front of me. And I don't know where it is. I think it's in a pile behind me. So I'm not going to talk about that this episode. I will talk about it next episode. It's a pattern I am designing. So I would like to have a little bit more of it done before I share it. So sorry for the teaser, but stick around for next episode and you'll find out about another pattern that I'm designing. Okay, in terms of acquisitions, it has been two months. So I have a few. Um, let's start with fiber acquisitions. I have three fiber acquisitions. So I spun, I have spun a ton during Tour de Fleece. I have spun every day up until I got COVID. So like this week. And then this week I, pardon me, I have the hiccups. This week I just finished my Cheris, um spin. But the day that I finished my Cherise spin, this just stunning bat arrived. So uh, BZB Knits 
recently did a shop update of hand carded bats and as soon as I saw the bats that she had posted I was like oh my god that's me and a bat um so I picked up two of the seafoam bats by her Is this not the most beautiful bat you have ever seen? Uh, it is approximately 88% wool, merino cordedale, and targi, and 12% silk. I love it so much that I don't quite want to spin it yet. So this is just going to be a little yarn pet for a while <laughs> until I am ready to turn this stunning bat into yarn. I'm kind of scared that I'm going to like ruin it, which I know is ridiculous, but... I'm worried I'm gonna ruin it. It's just so beautiful. I can't get over it. And it's so squishy. I love it. So yeah, this was my first acquisition. I highly recommend you check out BZB's bats. They are just the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Yeah, extremely excited to spin this. I also got some Malabrigo fiber. I got two different colorways. I got Algas and Deep Ocean by Malabrigo. They're both Nube roving. I specifically wanted roving because I am slowly practicing my long draw. I am not good at it. <laughs> um, and so I thought it'd be fun to try with some roving. And so I got these two. I've used Nube before and I find it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes it's like felted together and sometimes it's like beautiful and soft and fluffy like you would expect roving to be so I worry that this might be a tiny bit felted together if you have had the same problem with Malabrigo Nube before please let me know I want to know if I'm crazy I don't think I am I don't know. But yeah, I thought these were both really beautiful. I'm clearly in like a sea foam, sea-ish color mood right now, which I don't hate. I love these colors. So yeah, those were my fiber acquisitions. I have a few yarn clubs that have come in and one pre-order. So I had my June and July Paisley Knits book club skeins come in. Now, I can't remember what books these are for because I haven't read either of them. I know that I have one of them on Audible that I'm going to listen to while I knit socks with it, um, but I just love both of them. Like I just think Kali is just a magical dyer. I am so excited to meet her at Flock. Kali, if you are watching this, I am so excited to finally meet you at Flock because I'm such a big fan of your yarn oh my god so yes these are my two i'm still knitting march's socks and i didn't put any work into them this month which is why i haven't shown them um so i need to like catch up on my sock sets because i had intended to do one every month but here we are <laughs> i will get there i will get there maybe that's what i'll bring to flock and just knit like socks endlessly the whole time we'll see but i just think they're so cute ah just gorgeous. Okay, I also got my Mystery Cookware Club by Little Fiber Co. Now, this is the last month I'm getting yarn from this club because I've actually switched to the Fiber Club. But this month is Olive. This is my Olive skein. This is so far outside of my color com comfort zone but I absolutely love it. I think this would be stunning in some kind of shawl and I am so excited to knit with this. I would have never in a million years walked into a yarn store and bought this myself, but I think Lauren did an amazing job and I cannot wait to knit with this. I'm so excited. Uh, this is the Merino DK, by the way. So yeah, this is my Olive Club colorway. 
I placed an order a couple of months ago with Paisley Knits for her summer yarn uh, pre-order and both of those colorways also came in. This one's already caked up as you can see. This is a color, it's pink, and this is a colorway Butterfly P. I got one skein of this and four of this. I'm going to make a lento with my four skeins of Butterfly P. I just think this is the most beautiful color ever. I'm like, I am a little bit in love with this color right now, which you will discover when you see this, which is De Rerum Natura Antigone, that I'm going to make an Ingrid top out of that I also got. Here's another acquisition um, this month because uh, I want like the Ingrid top, which I think is super beautiful by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Very similar colors. Um, and this is going to become a muscle bra. I am not a neon girly, but for some reason I've been seeing neon pink hats everywhere lately and I desperately want one. So ordered this, already caked it up because I want to cast it on like now. And I have one more acquisition to share with you. I have been wanting to buy from this dyer for the longest time. I absolutely adore Grenouille, uh, Grenouille Co, which is a New Brunswick based dyer in Canada. I have loved her yarn for the longest time and finally saw a shop update and was like, you know what, this is the time I'm going to buy some yarn. So I bought four skeins of the colorway Gourmingast. Now I don't know what Gormen means, but Gast means ghost in German, so Gormengast is Gormen ghost? I have no idea. It is 100% BFL, uh, non-superwash fingering weight, and I think I'm also going to make a lento with this. I'm not 100% sure, but I just think it's the most beautiful. Again, sea greeny blue, clearly I have a color palette this summer, um, and I can't wait to knit with this. So. Those are all of my acquisitions. Um, in terms of life stuff, I have not updated you since I went on the LA Yarn Crawl. Uh, and by that, I mean I only actually went to one yarn store. Um, it was the weekend I actually moved into my new place here with my partner. So we took like two hours off of moving and we went down to Wild Fiber Studio down in Santa Monica which is my local yarn store and I had never been before and oh it was just so cute it was lovely I got to meet the lovely dyers behind sea change fiber oh I bought some beautiful yarn which I don't know where it is it is in my yarn pile that is currently obscured by stuff I have not unpacked um so I'll show that in the next episode I will include some footage I did take a little bit of footage so I'll include that at the end of this video but wild fiber was just so beautiful i can't wait to go back and i will be going to flock i am so excited my partner and i booked our tickets last night so i will be there on saturday if you want to come say hi please do i have stickers because i have just recently released my new logo and my website and my newsletter uh so you've already seen the logo already you would have seen it in the opening card and I will have little tiny stickers of that for Flock. So if you're interested, please come say hi. I would love to meet you in person. Um, I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's going to be a great time. And yeah, I think that's everything I had to share today. So thank you so much for sticking along. Uh, if you've made it all the way to the end of this video, I really appreciate it. I would love to hear what you are currently knitting uh, in the comments. Please let me know. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your weekend and happy knitting. Bye.